Well, good morning. Glad you're with us today. Happy Wednesday to you as we study Philippians. This will be the 14th study, and we are in Philippians chapter number 2, starting in verse 19. And this is a great account. The, we're going to look over the example of Timothy here in verses 19 through 24. So I'm going to ask you to start by reading along with me, and then we'll talk about Timothy. Verse 19, But I trust in the Lord Jesus to send Timotheus shortly unto you, that I also may be of good comfort when I know your state. For I have no man like-minded who will naturally care for your state, for all seek their own not the things which are of Jesus Christ, but ye know the proof of him that as a son with the father, he has served with me in the gospel. Him therefore I hope to send presently so soon as I shall see how it will go with me. But I trust in the Lord that I also myself shall come shortly. And we begin this chapter, or we began this chapter with a careful look at the example of Jesus Christ. He provided for us not just salvation, but the, the manner in which God is pleased with the servant, and that is through humble service. Christ displayed it perfectly because he is the only God-man, that hypostatic union, perfectly God and perfectly man. I don't know about you, but sometimes I can be overwhelmed by the example of Jesus Christ because I know in the back of my mind that I can never attain such a high level of sacrifice. And I think that's kind of the idea with Paul then, because Paul lays out his life and uh, as an example of humble service in the next section. So he 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 says uh, that he's going to live an example and live with that same mindset that Christ has. But even with Paul, we can think I can't serve the same manner that Paul served. And so Paul now introduces us to his humble assistant Timothy. And we saw Timothy already in Acts chapter 16, verses 1 through 4. We saw that he linked up with with Paul in the evangelistic efforts of the second missionary journey. And most likely, that's when Timothy began his partnership with Paul, very likely involving the first stop with the, the church of Philippi. And this is important because Timothy was a, he was fresh in service, uh, He'd already made such an impact on Paul that Paul wanted to take him with him. Yet here in Philippians chapter 2, Paul can also highly recommend and trust Timothy in leading in the service at Philippi. I want you to notice four things, four aspects of Timothy's service that are highlighted by Paul. But even before we do that, I'm going to ask you to to pause, go back to Acts chapter 16 and read verses 1 through 4 and read the introduction that we have to Timothy or Timotheus as he is called here. So would you pause and read that Acts 16 verses 1 through 4. And so we see the beginning aspect of Timothy's service and how he he came to be acquainted with Paul in service. Now, he knew Paul before, and we'll get to that in a moment. But I want you to notice four aspects of Timothy's service that are highlighted by Paul in the passage here in Philippians. Look at verse 19. But I trust in the Lord Jesus to send Timotheus shortly unto you, that I also may be of good comfort when I know your state. And as you read in in Acts chapter 16, Timothy is a young man. He's a young man, and he's willing to serve in second place. He doesn't have to be the main guy. He, he's there to support Paul. He's there to build Paul up. He's there to encourage Paul. Timothy is submissive in the direction that Paul is going. In fact, Paul here, under inspiration, writes these words, but he feels directed by God to send Timothy. And Timothy is willing to submit to that direction. Paul also knows that the Lord is working in Timothy's life. And it's going to comfort Paul to know that Timothy is in Philippi helping to direct and to mature the church there. What a great truth this is that's presented for us here. Uh, that Timothy already had made such a, a profound impact in the life of Paul. Now, just for clarity's sake, Timothy's been serving the Lord alongside Paul now, maybe not exclusively, but in service now for about 11 years. 
So 11 years of service that Paul has confidence in him, in his heart, in his ability, in his humility. And just to give you some more background, Paul met Timothy in Lystra at roughly uh, the age of maybe 16 or 17. And it was at the age of about 21, they think, historically, that he he began ministering with Paul. So Timothy might be about 32 years of age at this point, uh, of, of the point of Philippians. Now, he would have been about 21 the time he started serving alongside Paul. And, and so he's still quite a young man. I consider him to be a young man there. And, and yet, Paul is confident. And he's confident in Timothy's ability because Timothy ministry is not about Timothy. It never has been. Timothy is willing to take second place in service or even third place in service. He's there to serve God. He's there to minister alongside, to strengthen Paul. And then and then he'll take third himself, do whatever is necessary beyond that. So Timothy is young. That's what I want you to see. He's a young man and he's willing to serve in, in a second place position. Uh, number two, Timothy is a young man who has a parallel spirit with Paul. Look at verse 20. For I have no man like-minded who will naturally care for your state. Timothy is unequal in service alongside of Paul. This is a high accolade. Just This is impressive that Paul says that about Timothy. He has a, a natural care that Paul agrees with. And he has a natural care for other people, a sacrificial care. And Paul recognizes that in Timothy. In Jeremiah 3 verse 15, there's a promise that's given. Jeremiah says, I will give you pastors according to mine heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. And Paul seems to indicate here that Timothy has that pastor's heart. He, he cares for people the way that God wants to care for them. And he, he sees his life as an opportunity to serve other people. And so Timothy cared for churches the same way that Paul cared for churches. We could say that his pastoral care is, is of deep spiritual concern. In fact, the term naturally cared here in the King James is the Greek word uh, uh, nesios. It means a genuine and a deep sincerity. He has a genuine and a deep sincerity in service to the people. He has that pastor's heart. A further promise is given in Jeremiah chapter 23 verse 4. It says, I will set up shepherds over them which shall feed them, and they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed, neither shall they be lacking, saith the Lord. So the tender care that's described in Jeremiah parallels the care that God provided. And that's the same concept of care, of genuine and sincere care that Paul and Timothy are able to give. They and them in that Jeremiah 23 reference, maybe you want to turn there even, Jeremiah 23 verse 4 says, I will set up shepherds over them which shall feed them They shall fear no more, nor be dismayed, neither shall they be lacking, saith the Lord. They and them is actually a reference to the people, not to the shepherds. It's a reference to the people. The people will no longer fear. The people will be fed. The people will not be dismayed. The people will not be lacking. And they're not lacking because God has provided pastors, he says here, shepherds, to guide them and to spiritually feed them invigorate them, and uh, pastors who care for them. And Timothy is one of those pastors, young pastor, but he has that parallel spirit with Paul. And so Paul can highly commend him and send him to Philippi. By the way, I think Philippi are, might already have a good idea of this. They they've saw, yes, they saw Timothy as a very young man, but they have hopefully already seen that same heart. Now, the third reason that Paul, uh, that Timothy is, is uh, a prime example is that Timothy's a young man who's willingly denies himself for service to Christ. Verse 21, for all seek their own, not the things which are Jesus Christ's. All is a very sweeping statement. It statement's a general reference here uh, given by Paul. All is used here to describe the collective unit of Christians. 
and their unwillingness to deny themselves. Now, that is a, a strong con condemnation that, it, generally speaking, everyone seeks their own. They're, they're seeking their own pleasure. They're not willing to sacrifice. They're not willing to deny themselves. Some theologians argue it, it's specifically a reference to the work in Philippi that Paul had sought for help in Philippi already, and in general, pastors from other areas, and maybe even the pastors in Philippi, didn't want to help. Now listen, just remember this. This is very plausible because Philippi is under persecution. Philippi has false teachers in it. Uh, maybe not directly in the church, but directly attacking the church. And so it's likely that Paul has uh, tried to get help and nobody's been willing to help. No pastors have been willing to help. And so it could be a reference to them. Regardless, the general truth applies. People are self-seeking. Pastors are self-seeking. Wrapped up in our own affairs. Not willing to endure denying ourselves, generally speaking, for the betterment of others. And what a harsh rebuke that is. But we know it's true. There have been many times where we have engaged other Christians in, in acts of service, maybe acts of service for someone else, and there's not really a willingness. It's refreshing. I know there's always some Christians who are willing to help, willing to do anything. But often there's a lot... We ask, even as pastors, Pastor Hines and I, we ask of people and they're not really willing to help. And so I'll be honest, that sometimes that can be discouraging. Yet at the same time, Paul understood this fact. But he's got here a young man who is willing to help whatever. Whatever needs to be done, he's willing to do it. And what a humble, sacrificial spirit that is. Paul already exemplified this with Christ. Christ was so willing, he was willing to take on the cross for us. Paul is willing, willing to go to prison. And now he shows us this example of a young man, a young man who desires to please the Lord, a young man who, who doesn't want to uh, just sit back and take a comfortable line. He's willing to deny himself, and he's willing to sacrifice for the service of other people. And he should be commended for that, but he's setting him up as a challenge for us. An encouragement to Philippi, but also a challenge for us. And there's a comparative statement here. The use of all is meant to contrast with Timothy. The willingness of Timothy. Timothy didn't seek his own benefit first. He habitually, and I think that's the key, the habitual sacrifice of Timothy. He habitually placed the needs of others ahead of himself. Yes, we can all sacrifice once, twice, a few times, but how many of us are willing to habitually deny ourselves in sacrificing for other people? It's a high accolade to Timothy, and it's a high calling for each one of us. Timothy's primary concern was the truth of Jesus Christ, the mission of the church to advance the gospel, to advance the truth and the practice of Christ. And so here's what I would like you to do. I'd like you to pause. I want to give you a, a short assignment here. Would you pause, take a piece of paper, and write down the following categories? And after you've written down the categories, I want you to pause and discuss the specific ways that we can deny ourselves for spiritual benefit of other people and for Christ. So I'll give you the categories, and maybe you want to do this with your family, or maybe you want to do it individually. Either way is fine. Uh, break it up however you choose. But would you write down the following categories and identify specific ways that we can deny ourselves? And so I'm going to give you some broad categories. I'm going to give you just a few. Comfort. What are some ways that we can deny ourselves a little bit of comfort in sacrifice of service for other people. We deny ourselves comfort. Possessions. You knew I was going to hit that one. It's an easy one. I'm going to give you uh, some more difficult ones though. And ones that are specifically good for younger people as well. So comfort, possessions, livelihood. Now we don't often think of denying ourselves of livelihood. A job, occupation, things like that. But it's a, a good avenue to think. Security. What are some ways that we deny ourselves security, personal security, for the spiritual benefit of others? Position, following, recognition, and friendship. What are some ways that we, we can deny ourselves recognition 
or we can deny ourselves friendship. That's an odd one. It might take a little bit of, of time. Probably a very good one for young people to think through, teenagers to think through as well. So I'll go over them again real quick. Comfort, possessions, livelihood, security, position, following, recognition, and friendship. Maybe need to rewind and get those again. Hopefully not. Would you pause though and just have a small discussion or identify and try not to pick just easy, broad. Try to be specific. What are some specific ways that we can deny ourselves in those categories in order to advance God's kingdom? All right. Well, welcome back. I hope that was a good discussion. I want to identify the fourth reason or the fourth aspect of Timothy's service that Paul highlights. First, he highlights that that Timothy is a young man who's willing to deny himself in order to serve. I'm sorry, he's willing to take second place in order to serve Christ. Number two, he's willing to deny himself. I'm sorry, I did it again. Number two, he's willing to have a parallel spirit with Paul. He has a parallel spirit. Number three, he's willing to deny himself in order to serve Christ. And number four, he's a young man who is a trustworthy disciple like Paul. Verse 22, but ye know the proof of him that as a son with the father, he has served with me in the gospel. Him, therefore, I hope to send presently so, so soon as I shall see how it will go with me. But I trust in the Lord that I also myself shall come shortly. And so Paul, he's hoping, trusting that he's going to be able to uh, unite again with the church. But Paul and Timothy have built a strong relationship here. It's kind of like a father-son. It's a son because Paul most likely led him to the Lord in Lystra um, 15 years previous to this. But Timothy has also served, as we said, alongside of him. He's grown naturally. He's been discipled by by Paul. And so Timothy serves with Paul. He served with him. Listen to this. He served with Paul in Philippi, Thessalonica, Corinth, Ephesus, and in Rome in prison here. So five key places that he served alongside of Paul. On top of that, Timothy's been involved in the, in the writing of New Testament books. Now, we don't typically call him an author because he's he didn't necessarily pen it, but Paul mentions him either as, as being a helper in the writing uh, or, and it could have been the one taking down the 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 dictation of Paul, or he's the recipient of a letter. Paul's involved, or Timothy's involved in writing or receiving Romans, 2 Corinthians, Colossians, Philippians here, 1 and 2 Thessalonians, and 1 and 2 Timothy. Eight books of the Bible he either helped write, participate in, or received instruction from Paul by God. And, uh, or by God from Paul, however you want to word it. So Paul, Timothy has been very effective up to this point, although a young man starting serving when he's 21 years of age, very effective, very profitable. He was also sent by Paul and served in the following churches. So served as a pastor in the following churches, Thessalonica, Corinth, and now here in the church of Philippi. Timothy has been very active He's been denying himself. He's been in service parallel to to Paul working alongside him. And he's been willing to to take second place at times, uh, to be that servant, doing whatever uh, God deems worthy of being done. But he's also been a trustworthy disciple. Paul has seen him grown up. And Paul has now great confidence in sending him to Philippi. Despite his youth, the fact that he didn't have didn't have formal training, and and had gone through many hardships, Timothy is now an unparalleled uh, young servant for Christ. That's what Paul's saying. I've got no one else. I'm, I'm sending you the best I've got. Timothy in his service was was not defined by his youth. It wasn't defined by his education. It wasn't defined by his background. And it's not defined by him riding the coattails of Paul either. He was his own servant. And he was faithful. He was faithful no matter where he was. He was devoted to humble service. And he's full of compassion uh, 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 in service to other people. What a prime example Timothy is. Young, yet highly effective for the Lord. 
And I hope that's an encouragement to you, that you too, no matter what your background, no matter what your education, no matter what your age, no matter uh, what you've done already or not done in ministry, you can be highly effective for the Lord. Let us continue to grow. Let us continue to grow in God's grace and in God's peace. And I hope you have a wonderful day today.